Recipe class, I am just going to do a really quick video on using the data import wizard to help you write code to import a data set. So I have saved my garden harvest data to a CSV file, a comma delimited file. And I am going to read it in and I've also modified it a little bit just to show you some tricks, I guess. Um, so I'm going to go to this import data set and I'm going to choose from text reader. I'm going to browse to where I have that file. So it is right here. It's called 2020 harvest. And I'm going to open that and we're going to see a little preview of the data here. So one of the first things I do is I look at how it has characterized my variables. And one of the first things I notice is these don't look like variables at all. I see my variable names down here, vegetable, variety, date, weight, units. So what has happened in this file is whoever created it, it was me. Um, I inserted two more rows, um, which sometimes you'll see people do when they wanna try to nicely display things in Excel and whatnot. Well, that's fine for looking at it there, but when we want to read in the data, that causes problems. So one of the things we can do is we can skip these first two rows and we can skip them by choosing two instead of zero. So that will skip the first two rows. And you can see over here in this code preview, it has added an argument that says skip equals two. So now I can see most of these are variable names. We still have a problem with this first column, but I can easily, after I read in my data, uh, like pipe into a select and select minus X1 to get rid of that. Um, a couple other things I noticed. So here, the weight is reading in as a character and I want that to be numeric. So um, I'm just gonna scroll through here and I think the problem is that it sees this dash uh, which isn't a number, so it thinks it's a character. Well, I'm going to switch this to numeric. And notice when I do that, it actually translates that to a missing value. So anything that's not a number will be a missing value. So that's really nice. And it's written that code for me, so I don't have to remember how to write the code. Um, the other thing we might try, and I didn't do this beforehand, so we'll see how it works. We might try changing uh, this date, which is a character, to a date. Um, and I think we're in month, day, year. Let's try it out. This might not work. Yeah, so this one's not going to work. This one we'll have to solve a different way. So let's take that back to a character. Um, and since that's what it guessed, um, Let's see here, where did it do that? Um, what did that call? Oh, okay, that's still there. Um, I, I, when we copy the code, I might just um, get rid of that, but this, this, it's not causing problems. The issue is um, really in how the data were saved. So because some of the months, um, because it's like a single number here for the day or yeah, for both the month and the day, that's what's causing problems. But we can fix, fix that later using our um, Luberdate functions. Um, so at this point, I think I've sort of done as much as I can do and I'm not gonna click that import button, okay? Again, not, oh, wait a minute, I forgot one more thing, sorry. Let's go look at variety here. And another thing I did is see this here, it says missing. Well, I know that that means missing value, but R doesn't know that. But if I want to, I can change what my missing values are. So for now, I'm just gonna put null. And then after I copy and paste this code, I'm gonna change that, um, this missing value to capital M-I-S-S-I-N-G. Okay, so now I'm not gonna click that import button. Instead, I'm gonna copy this set of code and cancel out of here. And I'm going to paste it 
Oh, let me make this bigger now. Oops. And I'm going to paste this code into an R code chunk, right? I don't want to just import my data because then I can't replicate what I did. And when I try to knit my file, it's not going to know where to find that data. Um, and here I'm going to just give this a different name. Oops. And we'll read in the file. And then this way I can use, um, I'm going to just make this look a little bit nicer. So I can get rid of this column character one because um, it's automatically going to read it in that way. Um, and I'm going to leave the weight as a number so that it does that correctly. Here for the missing values, remember I was just using this to get the code. I'm going to change this to missing. So this is a way for me to cheat a little bit and, and have R write some of the code for me so that I didn't have to remember all of these things. So if I run this code, um, what this is telling me is um, that it filled in uh, for that first column that didn't have a name, it filled it in with X1. And then I had some issues um, where I didn't have numbers and we knew that was gonna happen. This is where the dashes occurred. Um, and let's just take a look at the file so if we look through here in weight, we will see these missing values. And then for variety where we had those missing, um, those are now NAs as well. Um, and I could do one last thing. And uh, before I sort of call this, I could, or before I save this, I could select minus X1 and then I'll get rid of that first variable. Um, so now if I go over here and look at this, X1 isn't there anymore. All right, that's all I have to say. I'm going to stop sharing and I am going to stop the video. There we go.